Okay, we'll uh, pray, pray first before begin. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask that you uh, speak through me and open our ears to hear. Uh, help us to be meek and humble to receive your word in meekness and, and, and humility. Father, we just humble ourselves that we cannot do anything without you. We need your Holy Spirit here and to guide us and to lead us into your truth. Father, send your mighty angels to protect us and guard this place and guard each one of us. I just, I just ask that you give us some revelations of your kingdom and about the spiritual realm and about the things to come. In Jesus' name I pray. We just uh, thank you for everything that we have, this air that we can breathe, this clothes that we have. Father, we just thank you, Father. There are so many people without any clean air or uh, any kind of uh, clothing, Father. So uh, help us to be rejoicing in you always and help us to be, be, be in your spirit and in your kingdom always. In Jesus' name I pray, Lord God. Amen. <coughs> so, uh, you know, like I said, clean air, you know, we'll talk about China right now, they're really like breathing like all the polluted air. For some reason, for several days or weeks, the air has been super like foggy and smoggy. Uh -huh. You know, they're breathing really like chemicals into their lungs and <coughs> cause lung cancers and stuff, you know, of course. You know. Um, today I want to talk to you about some spiritual things like talking about angels of God, okay? Uh, we think there are angels around, right? Right? What do you think they are? Do you think they got any personalities and stuff like that? Do you think they got any like, or, or they're just like robots, God tells them to do it, they just do right away. Do you think they're just like robots or do you think they got like personalities too? Personalities. Yeah, yeah, they're like us. They're like us, but they're just working for the Lord directly. They're angels of God, right? And they've seen the glory of God and, the, and the, all that stuff, and, and they know that God is so true. And, and just like us, they, they worship the Lord. They sing praise unto God too, you know? And uh, we have to know that there are angels around us sent to each one of us to protect us. Whoever believes in Jesus, God sends their angels you know, to protect you. But the angels also look at us our lives you know they, they look at us you know and uh, let's let's read um, Exodus chapter 23 verse 20 so we have to know like uh, these beings you know uh, behold I send an angel or did you guys find it yet Exodus 23 yeah 23 verse 20 Okay. Uh, Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. For mine angels shall go before thee and bring thee into the, unto the Amorites and to the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and Hivites and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Okay, so in verse 21 it says, Do not provoke. You know, do not provoke them. Um, the angel? Yeah. So it's like God, God saying that I'm going to send an angel before you and he's going to guide you out. You know, he's going to lead you and stuff. And I'm going to make him to bring you into a place which I prepared for you. But 21 says, beware. Beware of him, you know. Be careful. And obey his voice. Provoke him not. Do not provoke him. So how can we provoke an angel? How do you, how do you provoke an angel? Do you know how, how, how to provoke an angel? Um, usually it's by our unbelief. We can find it in, um, I think it's John or Luke, is it? Uh, let's see. I think it's uh, actually Luke uh, where Remember Zechariah's? Remember? Yes. Oh, guess? Oh, hello. You can sit there. Hello. Hello. Hi, I'm Erin. 
Oh, nice to meet you guys. Yeah, you can just sit here. Oh, my name is Alfred. Uh, I just take care of the English group. You know. Yeah, are you guys from Northwestern? Um, no. No. Oh, from oh, okay. oh Northbrook. Oh, really? Oh, how did you come to come here? Oh, well, my parents are like really family friends with Judas. Oh, okay, that's great. That's great. Okay, well, welcome. We're gonna be learning some stuff that uh, <coughs> haven't heard <laughs> before. So we're talking about God's angels, and basically we're just saying that, um... Why don't we turn on the lights? Brighter. Brighter? Oh, you can make it bright. Oh man, I got to do a lot of shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, thank you. Is this better? Yes. Okay, this is better. Okay, it sounds great. I upload on YouTube, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. Everything good? Okay, okay. No, no, it's fine. Okay, so we are from reading from Exodus chapter 23, uh, verse 20, if you got your uh, Palm Bibles or your phone. Oh, you don't, okay. Um, 23 says, 23 verse 20 says, Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not. So God has his angels sent to each one of us and we might provoke him. We might provoke them to anger. Of course, we're, if we're provoking them, we're of course you know, provoking God the Father. But God the Father is so merciful and generous that he's, he's willing to be patient with you. But there are angels sent to you guys. You know, and they have feelings like us. They're, they're servants of God. They praise the Lord. They worship the Lord. I mean, if you've seen the angels uh, commanded by God to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, they have no problem getting rid of those people. They have no problem sending down the fire and, and raining brimstones upon these people. You know, they have no problem. You know why? Because they, they don't like people that are rebellious to God. You know, if you're rebellious to God, um, the angels don't respect you. You know, because they, they see the glory of God in heaven. They, these angels see the glory of God. They know the power of God. They know the word of God is so true. And they see these people disobeying God's word. They don't regard and honor the word of God. They don't read it. They don't study it. They don't have any knowledge of the Lord. And then they're right away just sinning and doing whatever they want. And, and the angels are seeing these people and they go like, God wants me to protect these people. You know, and when God commanded uh, the angels to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah from the judgment, because they, they didn't listen for a while, and they're just sinning sexually, homosexuals, you know, just doing all the sodomite, sodomite and everything like that. And then, you know, God had to finally put a judgment. Okay, you know, I don't want to destroy them, but you know, they're just it's just too much. It has reached the limit. It has it's reached the limit. Um, so, <laughs> so just say this, don't mind that. So they, the sins of, sins of the people have reached the limit and God's like, you know, I'm merciful God, but my mercy does not endure forever with those who do not regard me, with those who do not honor me and, and love me as they should. So these angels have no problem, you know, killing the people, even though it looks very violent and bad. Angels are like, these people deserve it. And they have, they're like us. They're like us. If we, if we are serving, servants of God, and like, if we are angels of God, and we see them all day long, and we see the Lord, and we see these wicked people doing all kinds of bad things, you feel the same way. It's like, oh man, these people, man, I just want to punch them or something, but I can't. You know? It's like, it's like that. So, Bible here says, you know, do not provoke the angel which I'm sending before you. And these people of Moses, you know, the, the people that came out of Israel, they're always complaining to God. It was, oh, we don't have water. Oh, Moses, come on, man, we're thirsty. Give us some water, you know. And they're like complaining, oh, Moses, I want, we want to eat some meat. I'm tired of manna, eating manna and stuff like that. And God was so perfect. And they were telling Moses, oh, did you just come out here to kill us in the desert? 
I'm going to want to, where's the promised land? Where is this stuff? And, and, you know, of course, they didn't go into the promised land because they were afraid of those giants, which, which God was going to help them out to win the war and stuff. But they had unbelief. They didn't believe in God as strong as they should have been. They didn't believe in the word of God that they were going to be going into the promised land. They didn't believe. And because of their unbelief and their complaining and whatever about their situation, they could not enter the promised land. God, in, in, his, in his anger, did not let these people go into the promised land. We'll go to a Hebrews chapter 3. Um, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 7. Okay, God. Okay. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost saith, today, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the day, as, as in the provocation, provocation, in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years, wherefore I was grieved with that generation, and said, they do away error in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. And verse 12 says, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily while it is called today lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Oh, there's so much, so much here, right? So basically, Paul is saying, hey, remember, he's, he's re-quoting the scriptures from the Old Testament, and this is New Testament, by the way. He says, hey, watch out that you don't get hardened your heart with sin, because sin, you know, Peter says in some other, Peter chapter Peter or something like that, that sin hardens one's heart, and once it hardened, you're going to disrespect God's word. You're not going to follow. Or you're going to, you know, I don't, I don't, I, it's okay, I can do whatever I want. I don't need to really do that. You know, I'm already saved, am I not? And you're going to harden yourself because sin hardens your heart against the word of God, against the Lord. So that you're going to commit more sins and you're going to end up, God's going to end up put you over to a depraved mind. Uh, uh, like kind of like a, he's gonna put you over to. Like he's gonna make your mind like like a dummy, basically. He's gonna make you. What did you do? You remember the verse? Do you remember the verse? Anyway, there's some verse that says God will, those people who are rebellious, God will put them to a depraved mind, uh, like a like a almost like a, a ignorant mind, where they will. On their face, reject God's word and do whatever their heart desires to do. You know, God's going to give him, I forgot that word. But anyway, when I remember, I'll say it. But he's going to give them over, and then they're just going to be openly sinning. It's okay to be gay. It's okay to be uh, sleeping before marriage. It's okay to drink. It's okay to smoke. Everything's fine. Everything's good. Just uh, believe in God. Then you'll go to heaven, and everything's fine. And God's going to, just, just make you like destroyed. But then we know the scriptures that tell us straight up, you know, let the righteous be righteous still and let the unrighteous be unrighteous in Revelation, the New Testament. You know, and I'll come to divide the, the sheep and the goats. You know, and those who are goats will be sent to hellfire. Those who are sheep will be entering into the kingdom of God. You know, we, we better be make sure that we are following the Lord. You know, with all our heart, because this is some serious stuff. God doesn't play around. Back in the day, He didn't let those people come into the promised land because of their unbelief, because they hardened their hearts through sin. That's what, that's what Paul says right here. So He said, be careful that you don't wash yourself away with sin, because this is going to harden your heart, and that's going to cause unbelief in you. And guess what? When you have unbelief, the angels of God around you, you know, you look at you, and they're, they're angry at you. They just want to, oh, these people, you know, they don't know God, they don't... They don't serve God. They don't look for Him. I mean, these people are outrightly doing evil. Oh, I just want to, you know, you know, they're getting angry around you. And it's grieving the Holy Spirit whom is within us. You know, this building is not the church, okay? The church is this body. Each one of you is a church, you know? Anywhere two and three gather in His name. 
There he is. There the Holy Spirit is. There Jesus is watching right over. There the angels of God encamped around us, you know, protecting us. Because we ask. Ask and it'll be given unto you. Seek and it'll be, you know, you know, you'll be you'll find. Knock and the door will be open unto you. You know, when you ask God, send me your angels, protect me. Then God's gonna send your God's gonna send his angels to protect you. If you don't even ask, you know, there might be guardian angels looking at you, but you know, you don't ask, you don't know, seek the Lord, you're just, just whatever, I don't care, you know, God's just there, you know, and I don't care about you. You know, the, the angels got like, I don't care about you either, you know, see if I'm going to. That's why the Bible says in the, in, when we go to heaven, we will be judging angels. Why do we have to judge angels? Or aren't they already doing 100% correctly with God? No, because the angels look at you and they, they don't want to serve you. They don't want to, um, it's like, it's like you, you, you you're, you're like serving some drunkard or sinner and then these people don't love God and you're just like, I'm a, I have to be around because God told me to, but man, you know, I hope they get hurt, you know? <laughs> so, man, and then they, they be corrected in certain ways, you know? So God, the angels would even just allow it. You know, Zechariah was in the New Testament in the days of uh, Jesus Christ. Zechariah uh, was serving as a priest and was, you know, in the temple of God, and suddenly an angel appears in front of him. Angel Gabriel brings a message of God to him, because Angel Gabriel is a messenger of God. He brings a message to, to Zechariah, hey, you know what, you're gonna, uh, you're gonna have a son, and name him John. And then, he's like, Zechariah says to the angel, hey, how can I trust that, you know, that I'm gonna have a son? How can I know that I'm gonna have a son? And, you know, like, I'm too old. You know, I'm like old, and my wife is old. She's way past the bearing of child age. She's like 50 or something. And the uh, angel of God's like, angel of God gets pissed off. He's like, hey, I'm an angel of God. You know, don't you just see me just appear in, out of nowhere in the, in the, inside the temple of God where you're alone? Don't you see me? You know, and then he says, because of your unbelief, you shall be mute. And then, Angel just strikes him and he comes out, can't speak. Zechariah provoked an angel with his unbelief. You know? So, uh, you know, we cannot doubt the word of God. If a, a messenger of the angel comes, comes to you in a dream or something, like the angel of God came to Joseph in a dream, not in real life like Zechariah, but came to him in a dream and warned Joseph, hey, King Herod is going to kill your child, so go to Egypt. Go move over to Egypt. And then from the dream, Joseph went to Egypt. And, and the angel of God uh, told Joseph in a dream again, uh, before this of course, said, hey, don't, don't divorce Mary, because he wasn't going to divorce Mary, because she, was, she had a child of Jesus before marriage. And so Joseph was going to divorce her quietly. And then, and then the angel of God tells her, tells him, you know, in a, in a dream, not in real life, in, in a dream, hey, don't divorce your wife because she has the Messiah, you know, Jesus Christ in her. Don't divorce her because that's from the Lord. And so Joseph listens to the angel of God who brought the message from God. Okay? He didn't really listen to the Lord God. He didn't hear the Lord, but he heard the angel of God speaking to, you know. And we think that uh, angels of God, are not working today, they're definitely working today. Uh, when, when, I'll tell you my story, because uh, I, I, I keep on asking the Lord, open my spiritual eyes to see the things that are unseen. You know, and I pray like that a lot. And I guess my eyes were opened up because, you know, I do fasting and praying and all this stuff, right? So, uh, one day, my, me and my wife had some conflict and I told her, hey, blah, 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 you're, you're too prideful, hey, blah, 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 you need to go repent. And then when she heard this, she, she went to the closet and she cried until 3 in the morning. She cried unto the Lord. You know, she praying, 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 crying unto God. Because I guess, and she said later on that God showed her her heart that, that she is really selfish and, and prideful in a way. So she was crying because of that. And she cried, cried, cried to the I'm like, oh man, I cannot sleep, you know. She's, she's, she's so bitterly crying and it's like so, I'm twisting and turning, you know. And then around 3 o'clock, she, she comes, comes to bed, right. And then uh, she's, I was like, oh, finally, finally she's, she's, she's back. Oh, like, I'm not, she's not crying anymore, right? And I'm like that. And I look at her again, 
and I see an angel standing right next to her. Like she's lying here, and an angel standing with the golden hair, the white, clean, like, like, it's like kind of looks like a, almost like a Roman clothes, kind of like that. It's like white dress, white, you know, with a belt, and like, you know, it's like crease, like in the old time days, kind of clothing, but it's white and bright. And then there's the golden curly hair up to here. It's like curly. I didn't see the eyes and face uh, that much, but I saw up to like this much, you know, up to the hair. I don't know why I didn't see them, but it, it wasn't shown to me. Anyway, I was like, oh, that's an angel. You know, and then I was like, so tired, it was like, oh, that's an angel? You know, it's like, oh, man, that's crazy. And I just slept <laughs> like that, you know? Right, and then, and then I, but next day I told her, you know, God's angels, they come unto you when you pray unto God, when you seek Him, they really come. You know, they came to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was praying the Mount of Gethsemane, oh God, oh, if this cup, you know, let it pass from me, because He didn't want to take all the filth, because He took our curses, he took all of our sins on top of him. It was not just the physical death that he was afraid of. Come on, he's a man of God. He's the son of God. He's not afraid of some physical torture and death. He's not afraid of that. He didn't want the separation of God because of the sins and the curses. And he had to carry all that curse, all the stress upon him on his shoulder for future generations. That's why it was so, so much for him to bear. I was like, I don't want to be like this sinful, you know, and I don't want to you know, be separated from you. God, God, God even didn't, didn't look at his son when he got crucified. He couldn't because of the sins of the, us. He couldn't, he couldn't look at it. You know, so, and Jesus is on the cross. Oh my God, my God, why did you forsake me? Even this Jesus Christ, he had to be strengthened with an angel. If you read, he's praying, praying, praying in the Mount of Gethsemane. He's sweating blood. I mean, he's, he's really in stress. He's sweating blood, like, like so much sweat and, and stress causing him to bleed from his pores, you know? And he's, he's sweating, sweating. And then the angel of God comes and then strengthens him. That's what the Bible says, you know, if you read correctly. So the angel of God even helps Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ on the cross says that, you know, people are mocking him, you know, blah, 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 you know. And Jesus says, hey, don't you think I can call, I can call right now 12,000 Twelve legions of angels, you know, right now I can call them and take me down, but not going to do it, right? He, he's, he's like that. He, told, he said. And then when Jesus was fasting 40 days, you know, he was fasting, Satan comes three times to tempt him, right? And then Satan tempts him, and then he brings him to a highest place, a mountain or something, a mountain top, on the top of the cliff or something, and he still tells him to jump down or something like that. Or, or, like, he shows him the whole world, right? And then, you know, Jesus says, it is written, blah, 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 you know, you, know, you shall only serve the Lord your God, right? And basically, Jesus Christ uh, was left on the mountain, and guess what? It says the angels came and tended and brought him, brought him down, you know, from that high place. The devil left him there. The devil didn't care. He's like, the angels come and take him down. You, know, you, you don't think the angels are here to protect you and guard you and whatever? Let's say you're driving, you know, and you're, you're, you're loving the Lord, you serve the Lord God, and you're driving, and you almost get into a car accident. Guess what? The angels of God, if you, they know they're going to protect you from getting harmed. You know, my mom got into an accident, you know, like uh, she's driving like 70, 80 miles on the highway, and then she fell asleep, and then, and then it hit the curb, and the car flipped over. You know, the, the car got total damage. But God sent an angel to, to somebody to, to convict them. And, and it was at nighttime. It was in the, she was driving from um, U of I, Champaign, Illinois, you know, because she dropped off my sister there. And she's driving three hours. And then she fell asleep in the road because it was too tired. She worked all day long to help her out and move. And then it's 8 o'clock. And there's not much cars. It's pure dark. And this just pure, like, grass field, nothing. And you know, you can drive there for miles with no cars behind and front. This is nighttime, right? She got flipped, car flipped over in there and then it fell into those place. And then I guess God convicted somebody, you know, with an angel or something. And then they came over and they said, hey, are you okay? You know, and she, they took her out and the, the car is just, you know, totally busted and broken. But she got no, no hurt. No physical damage except a few scratches or something. And then the car, if you see the car, is like, like sharp in like that, in the, in the front seat. It's flipped over, you know, no hard, nothing. And God sent the person to 
to, to take her out. God will protect those who, who love the Lord, you know, and who, who God knows that they're good people, they're meek people. God will protect them with their angels. But now if we're in rebellion, total rebellion against the Lord, you know, um, God will not really, I mean, the angels will like be hesitant to, oh man, I just wish to just get hurt, living more so I can wake up, you know. And, and they'll like, kind of like, not protect you as much. You know what I'm saying? Because they're, they're like, they're like us, they have feelings. They have emotions. You know. And in the Bible it says, Paul says this, by the way, Paul says, hey, um, make sure you, you um, tend to everyone, because some people have treated, have entertained angels unaware. Angels will come, come to you like a human, like a poor looking beggar or something. You give money to them. Hey, sometimes you, you might have entertained angels. You know, I, I heard this countless times from many, many people. Some people say, hey, they helped this poor guy, you know, gave some money and, you know, treat him nice and stuff. And they, they come and turn back and look around, not there anymore person disappeared. I said, huh? What happened? Where's that person? And they, they realize later, they read the Bible, and they say, oh, they've entertained angels unaware. They're there, you know? They're there. They're always there. So, do not provoke an angel with negative confession. If you don't know the promises of God, which are written in the Bible, you don't know the word of God, you're going to be confessing defeat. Oh, I cannot do this. Oh, I'm going to not be able to do this. Don't ever say it, even though the situation might be bad. Don't say it, oh, I'm, my life is ruined. Oh, don't, don't, don't ever speak negative confession because the angels hear it. The Lord God hears it from heaven and lets it be done according to how you spoke. You know, that's why the Bible says, you know, life and death depends on your tongue. And those who love it will eat those fruit. A lot of people curse these days. OMG, OMG, OMG. They, they use God's name in vain even though they don't believe in God. They use it as a curse word. They use the name Jesus Christ as a curse word. Something bad about Jesus Christ. Like, man, I want to punch them because they're using my father's you know, name, my, my, my Lord's name in vain. It's like, man, they don't even believe in Jesus and they're cursing his name. In movies, everywhere. They have to say the GD word. Jesus Christ's name, they have to do it. This is, this is of the world, it's of the devil. But these movies, I mean, they don't outright proclaim that they're devil worshippers because they might not be devil worshippers, but they're influenced by devils and demons. You know what? Um, there are demons and devils, by the way, too. If they're angels of God, there are also demons and devils that work for the devil. Okay? And they are spirits that look for a body to possess. They look for a body to possess. The Bible says, Jesus said, uh, they go around seeking for a place and they, they say what? Uh, I'm, I need to, if they're cast out from a person, they go around seeking in the dry place, you know, seeking for a body to rest in. And they call their body, I'm going to return to my house. They call this body their house. What? How can they call this body belongs to us. And this is a temple of the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit resides in here. How can they call this body theirs? They have faith. Oh, demons have faith. Sometimes their faith is stronger than yours. And that's why they possess and conquer other people. And, and if you have desire of darkness in your heart, whatever it is, I don't know, you know, if you have desire of darkness, oh, devil, love it. If you, if you listen to music that the devil, demons love, which is a lot of the mostly worldly music is of the devil, it attracts demons. When you're reading uh, novels of Harry Potter or watching those movies, oh, devils really love it. And they come. They go, oh, this guy is Christian and he's watching witchcraft movies. Oh, he's, he's, I can take care of him. And I can live with him because he has desire of darkness in his heart. And I these Christians, so-called Christians, going loving, lying, sinning, you know, drinking, debauchery, whatever this whole world is leading to, to end, you know, <laughs> the devils are right there. It's like enjoying 
and doing. And they what? If they come into you, they start tormenting you. You know? They, they seek rest, but find it none. That's what the Bible says. They look for rest, but they can't find it. So what they do? They torment you. They torment you, and they, they lead you to destruction. They lead you to hurt, accidents, cancer, diseases, whatever. They all lead you to their spirits. Either you're led by the Spirit of God when you move around, or you're led by demons to do whatever they want. Which is, they want to kill you, eventually. And bring you to hell with them. And they want you to depart from the faith of God. And they want you to go to the worldly ways. And many, many, many Christians falling. They're compromising. Okay, so, so some people get born again. Okay, there's this guy I used to listen to a lot back in the day. I used, to, I used to listen to a lot of corn, death metal, rock music, right? New metal, whatever, you know, same thing. <laughs> so this guy, corn guitarist, he's in meth, and he's, he's addicted to meth, and he finally got, gets out. God finally delivers him out of this meth, and he's he got born again in spirit, and he's like, oh, I want to serve God, and he's evangelizing, he's, he's talking about his testimony, and then he, he even... Uh, gets an orphanage he's in, in India he, he buys an orphanage and he, he's like oh I'm going to adopt all these children to me you know and 300 people and he supports them financially and he gives millions away to churches and stuff like that right guess what recently he went back you, you heard about it he went back to corn I was like what what's he doing you know um there's this thing called, if you're led by demons, they will put you back to the thing that you left behind. You left them, you left the band, you, you left, now you're living for God. Demons slowly, 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 slowly turn you back. By, by what? Because you start to compromise. You compromise the truth of God. It's like, the Bible says, do not hang around with bad people. You know? Because they will corrupt you. You know? Evil, evil communication corrupts a good man. Right? You get corrupt them. But you're like, oh, I need to go with love. It's all about love, isn't it? And they, 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 they forget wisdom. They forget about the wisdom of God. And they just, oh, it's okay. I need to evangelize. And I need to talk to them about Christ. And then you talk to them about Christ. But in the meantime, while you're evangelizing, you stay with them. You play with them. You do what they do. You drink with them. You smoke with them. And then guess what? You're back to the, back to the thing that you left. And okay, so, so you got to look at their fruits, right? Okay, so okay, he joined Korn back again, so I checked their newest music video. And not surprisingly, this music video is like he's dressed in white and black, and there's about black background, and there's this devil-looking like girl, literally with the black horns, you know, with the, with the black horn, with black clothing, with black dress, you know, dancing in the back and stuff. And that's their newest song. If, if, if you want to check it out. You know, I'm not lying. And you look at that video and then she's dancing. You know, the, 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 this blonde girl with the, with the hood, with the black horn, literally two horns. To guess. She's dancing around, you know. I don't know what she's doing, but... Anyway, you know, you know that fruit. You know? So if you start compromising, oh, it's okay. Oh, drinking once. Oh, it's just beer. You start compromising. Oh, it's just nothing. One beer, one beer, hundred beers leads to hard liquor, hard liquor leads to smoking, smoking leads to, you know, cigarettes leads to, oh, it's okay to smoke weed now, weed is legal, oh, let's make it legal, is this legal in California, you know, it's going to be more legal, it's okay, it's okay, everything's okay. Before that, 50 years ago, oh, sleeping around, oh, no, 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 sleeping wasn't around before marriage, was a no-no, right, in America. Now they all compromise. Oh, they do it in movies. They do it in the, it's become a culture of the United States. Sleeping before marriage, it's okay. Have, have your fun. Have fun. Don't talk about the STDs, but have fun. It's okay. Just use protection, you know, whatever. Just don't get pregnant, you know. Oh, but if you get pregnant, there's abortion. Abortion legal. You know, just, just don't care. You know, what if they aborted you, you know, Obama? Oh, abortion, okay. What if they aborted you? There be no law, you know? I mean, <coughs> come on, right? So uh, the the whole world right now is leading to 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 hell because they're all influenced by demons and devils. This country is becoming a demonic country. You have to realize that 
we're not living in a happy, happy world anymore. Okay? We're living in these dark times, you know, spiritually dark times. Yeah, you might have all the money, but where's the true joy and happiness rejoicing in the Lord? You know, you don't have to have money to be a happy person. But all you people, you see the people just walk around you, you know, riding the bus, just look around their faces. Are they happy faces? You'll find barely anybody smiling. They're all like, they're all like just sleeping, you know. Literally like that. Nobody's happy with all their stress marks, you know, on their face. You see that. Nobody's in joy. Because material does not make you happy. It makes you happy for the moment and for the time you're thinking, oh, it's so fun, you know. But when it comes up and bites you, and a lot of problems follow, because it's, it's from the devil itself. You know, it never brings true happiness. Yeah. It'll bring a lot of the bad things. So you've got to make the right decisions. Get to know Jesus Christ. Read the Bible. Pray, 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 pray. Without prayer, you know, our life is going to be destroyed. Spiritually, because we're going to be blind. And a lot of blind preachers lead the blind, and they both fall into the ditch. Yeah, that's what the Bible says. How can a blind person who's spiritually blind to these things lead blind people out of Egypt? They can't. Never worked. Never worked. They themselves need to be aware of the spiritual realm that the Bible talks about. But they, they ignore the Holy Spirit. They ignore the angels. They ignore demons and devils. They're going to be defeated by demons and devils. 100% defeated already. And they can lead nobody out. They can leave nothing out. You know? They think, oh, yeah, it's okay, you know, everything's okay. No, it's not. The Bible never said that it's okay. You know? Uh, let, let's go back to Hebrews chapter 3. <coughs> Verse 12 again. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily, daily exhort one another, correct one another daily. Not like out of condemnation, but out of meekness and gentleness and humility you do that, but do that daily, right? While it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin, Verse 14, for we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginnings of our confidence steadfast unto the end. See, if you hold our faith and believe in the Word of God, believe in the promises of God written in the Bible, that you'll be prosperous, God will make you the head and not the tail, all these kind of promises of good things. If you hold them with faith, then if you do that, then you'll be partakers of Christ, you know, if you hold it. That's a condition, if it's a condition statement. So if you don't, probably won't be able to be partakers of Christ, which is of heaven and, uh, and all the glory with the Lord, you know. So verse 15, while it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke, howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. But with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swore he that should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe it not? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. You know? Unbelief is not just not believing in Jesus. That's not just unbelief. Unbelief is not believing in the promises of the Lord. When God says something, you don't believe it. Oh, they start reasoning. You know? The Bible says, cast out demons. Oh, well, uh, cast out demons, that's uh, maybe 2,000 years ago. That's not for today. Yeah, their unbelief. They start reasoning with the Word of God. Instead of 
listening it instead of really believing it, with their unbelief, with the evil heart of unbelief, they don't know. Well, Bible says, do not sin, but how can I not sin? Doesn't make sense. So they don't believe it. But they don't know the secrets that if you follow the Lord, God will give you strength to overcome all sin. God will give you, you know, strength to overcome the Holy Spirit that's in you. Will bring the holiness in your life. But of course, if you don't listen to His voice, if you don't, don't the Bible says, my sheep follows me and they know me and they hear my voice. I don't hear anything. I don't hear nothing. You will hear the Lord if you follow the Lord. That's, you gotta read the other verses. You know? You gotta find out the secrets. The Bible's like a mystery hidden here, hidden there. You know, here little, there little. And it reveals unto those who really love Him and follow Him. It's not just revealed to anybody. The Bible does not make sense to a lot of people. They're like, I don't understand. You know? Because it's hidden from the wise and the prudent, but it's given unto babes and children. What does that mean? What? God wants to hide the power of God from the people who are wise? No. It's people who think they're wise. But the children and the babes are humble to listen. They want to listen. They want to learn. These people God gives it. To these people who, who think they, are, they know everything, God hides it from them. That's why the Bible is God resists the proud, but gives grace unto the humble. You know? He wants us to be humble before Him and come to Him like a child, little children. Because the kingdom of God is given to those who are like children. He said, unless you become like this little child, you by shall no means enter into the kingdom of God. How can it be a little children? We're 20 some 30 years old. How can he be a little child? What does Jesus mean by that? Become like a little child before the Lord. God. Trust Him. Trust Him. Oh, the parents. Oh, the, the children listen to the parents because they trust the parents. And they come to Him because they know that their parents are going to give them the good thing. If we know that our parents are going to give you the good thing, what about our Heavenly Father? He's still going to give you good things. Trust in Him. Do not come to him with unbelief. Oh, God's not going to give me a good thing. God's been always bad to me. You know, I think he does anything wrong. The Bible says he loves you with everything and he wants you to come. But you start off, God doesn't love me. He doesn't care about me. All the bad things happen to my life. All the devil is running my life, I guess. You know, hey, God loves you. He wants you to know the truth. You know, you're not here by an accident. You know, God brought you here to open your eyes, to hear even though there's not millions of people here in this place, you know, I've been praying. I asked the Lord, I said, what should I teach today? And I asked the Lord, please speak through me, for I cannot do it. Only He can. Amen? So, uh, you know, we'll go ahead and pray and end it here. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Jesus, Father, for revealing your word and truth. Uh, we just want to humble ourselves and receive the truth and meekness, Father, for we know that you resist the proud, so we just acknowledge right now that we cannot do anything without you. Father, we, everything that we can do is from you, that this body was given by you, the opportunity was opened by you, that we are here in this place, wherever we are at, uh, financially, spiritually, basically everything was provided by your grace. And everything that we know that we can do is by your grace. It is not by our works, Father, but it is by your grace that you can keep us in, in holiness and righteousness. So, Father, help us, Lord, as we, as we humble ourselves before you to receive more grace, Father, from you. Father, I just ask that you please give us passion for you. Give us love. Just fill us with your love that you love us with. Help us to know that. Open our hearts. Uh, give us an understanding in our heart to know the word. To know, your, to, to know your promises and your truth. Father, let the truth of God be revealed to each one of us in Jesus' name. And let us not be conformed to this world, but to conform to the Word of God and to Christ in the knowledge of Him in Jesus' name. Father, I just ask that you please, Lord, help us to be humble and meek and seeking you with a genuine uh, spirit and truth. Father, help us to seek you and worship you and praise you, not with our lip service, but with our hearts. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Father, we just thank you and give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Ah, oh, Gloria. 